All you got to do to start is put the power to the motor through the capacitors. Now we're making three phase. Hey, it's Brock here from Rock Hill Farms, and I'm on my way to visit my friend Paul Case. And today I'm going to sell him a couple of logs, and I'm going to check out their new sawmill building. So I think there are a couple of things from this trip that might be really interesting to you guys. Number one is how much these logs are worth and how they price them when they're buying logs. The second thing is the way they set their building up with at least one unique feature. And, you know, they've been milling logs professionally for several years now. They've got two really nice, fully hydraulic wood miser sawmills. And, you know, they've learned a few things about what they like and they, what they don't like about a sawmill setup. So we're going to go through and check out their setup. We're going to mill some logs. Should be a lot of fun. Good morning, Paul. It's morning, Fred. You're gonna have to start a little quicker. Well, I call it morning when I do something productive. How's the uh, dirt at your place? It's all wet. <laughs> Moving over. I'm not sitting on the weight. Okay. Those are hard on the weight because they don't they don't have any I mean you know how lube works. If it's lube when it started and the blade's going by 70 miles an hour, it ain't gonna be lube in just a second. Well, I haven't really looked at those blades yet, but uh, I did like several things about that easy boardwalk. One of them being that they make them in Missouri. Yep. The Kings make them, so we're able to make them in Kansas City. So, uh, how, how would you determine what these logs are worth? Uh, when they show up at our place, we pay 40 cents for them. 40 cents? A board foot. A board foot. So, and then this stick is just the magic stick that tells you how much board foot is in the log. What are the, what do the marks mean? Uh, that's how many board foot is in a log and there's a, a length to each side so I have an eight foot side and a ten foot side and so are, are you just putting this across the narrow end yep along the small end. ten foot board if the small end hits right there you've got hundred and six board feet Yep. sweet and then sometimes you can look at them and see defect of uh, that's not too soft um, but you can uh, we usually mark back if there's too many defects 
because you know you're not going to get as many board foot out yep. of each of them. So. Yep. It's this is just what I happen to have laying at the house. Uh, the eight foot board, and sometimes. Uh, and we usually count the bark. Uh, so the other one would be 98. Sometimes you can see there it might be under 85. But it was pretty pretty good one, so. It's not an exact thing, huh? Yeah. Yep, there's no perfect, perfect one, and sometimes a knot like that you can see visible bad from the outside, but that one's not really that bad. So, that one's kind of 75 one way and 50 another way, so middle 62, pretty easy to figure out. So that's all you need to know right there. Yep. And then you just uh, add those up and... I'm gonna be rich when he gets done calculating. <laughs> Times 40 cents, 62.20. $62? Or 69.20 cents, yep. So bringing them here, these two logs are worth $69. Yep. Might not get rich logging anytime soon. I'm out here with Paul Case and his son Scott, and I'm here today to sell them a couple logs, but more than that, I'm here to take a look at the building that they've put their mill in. Because that's my first question is, what is the ideal type of building if, you, if I do get a mill? So you've been running this, it's a Woodmiser LT40 for a long time. Yep. And so I just kind of wondered what were your things you felt like you had to have in, in a building, or how'd you decide to make it like this? Uh, the way that we were set up and what we saw, yeah, I'm kind of a one-man operation. So um, we added a few things from where we was at as far as cleaning from underneath the mill was awful. So we added a conveyor under it. Um, and but a other floor. Yeah, and a concrete floor. It's a little easier to clean up. Um, but besides the the mill and the edger, um, other than just being out of the weather. So you got to have a ton of access really to get in. That's one thing. Because yeah. I'd wondered if it would be better to have it open on two sides so you yeah. could get in and out the back. So where we were at before, uh, we didn't have big doors. And uh, now we can get 20 foot lumber in, which is kind of the max of what the mill will cut. Uh, so yeah, big doors and access to get stuff in and out without tearing it up is, is pretty ideal. Don't get any big ideas. When people come and ask us about 16, 18, and 20 foot lumber, we recommend they go to Lowe's, Home Depot, yeah. and ride out yeah. and first, you know, because yeah. we're going to make it higher than that because those things are heavy and difficult to handle. Yeah. It's a lot of extra work to go long yeah. and hard to get logs good enough to make good lumber that long. I, I really think that's cool what you set up. I'm going to get a better look at it. They've got a way to get dust out of here without much manual work. Yeah, well, so. I think we can turn it on for you and let yeah. you watch it run. Yeah. Awesome. So let's let's see this thing mill some logs and take a look at the uh, at the way that is pushing out the sawdust. So running three phase without three phase by using a rotary phase converter. Don't ask me to tell you how that works. You guys know I've been going around and visiting different sawmill owners and asking them questions and trying to learn about the different brands of mills. And most of that is from a hobbyist point of view. But what we have here is people who are earning their living and putting food on the table primarily by milling lumber. And that takes a serious approach to being productive. They're running this mill at least six hours a day, five days a week. So when you can take something like cleaning up the massive amounts of sawdust and bark out from under the mill and turn that into an automated process, that is 
saving you actual money, not just an annoyance of doing the job. And what I love about their setup is that it's not just effective, but it's also inexpensive, relatively. And it's it's the simplest solution I could imagine. Or they're taking one piece of used equipment and adding it to stuff they already had and making it work. All right, so I know you've done this before, but how you uh, sitting there making all those cuts and all that back and forth and up and down without thinking about it? You still have to know the measurements, know where your supposed where your cut's supposed to be. I I can uh, I have 16 options here, and when I'm cutting three befores, I have an auto up and an auto down, and I'm able to do the math. And on like those that I just cut, that was a nine or an eight by nine and uh, I'm able to choose my four inch cut and I can, this is just a bump, a bump of it to move up and down. And it reads all the way down to a 30 second on being accurate. So does that work? Like if you're cutting the same things all the time, you know that the first couple cuts you're using button one yep. and then the, the, the third cut is that button and it, it memorizes the saw height. Yep. And uh, yeah, and I, I have, couple orders that I cut all the time and I uh, have my button saved to whatever to whatever uh, whatever I'm cutting that's pretty cool and that's efficiency compared to all the those manual mills I've looked at yeah. this is so yeah. efficient so the coolest thing about this building in my mind is this feed conveyor they've got down under here they built a concrete trough to set it in and once a day, he can just turn that on and automatically feed out the sawdust. And that's a spreader hooked to this old tractor so they can just drive it out and spread it across the field if they want. I bet there are not very many people out there who've got a conveyor set up under their mill like that. Not like this one. Not, not at least, maybe big mill operations do, but not like big this. Big ones do. If I didn't have a big pile back there once a week and I keep that up pretty much cleaned up. But being able to sweep all of each floor to it, that's just... Yeah. Yeah, and then parking that, that spreader behind it, that's a pretty cool idea, too. And every other thing you're using here, you already had. You just bought the yeah, conveyor. conveyor. 220 electric comes in, and there's some rules about running a phase converter, the size we're running. This one is a 30 horsepower motor, and it will start and run a 30 horsepower motor with no load on it when it starts and it will run as much as 60 horsepower of motors. But you gotta be within 100 foot of your transformer and you gotta have a 100 amp breaker uh, that you're running it on. So, but uh, this this one's only running a 15 and this is the same size converter that we've got on the mill. But all it does is starts this motor on 220 with capacitors, so it's got two hot legs and it drags the third one the way a generator would to make the third hot leg. And so on three phase you have three hot wires running into the motor. A neat thing about three phase is if you hook it up and it runs the motor the wrong direction you just switch two of the wires and it'll go the other way. And that's kind of neat. But All you got to do to start is put the power to the motor through the capacitors. Now we're making three phase. And then in order to start the motor, now we're up and running. All right, and this, this right here is an edger that you're using to take the live edge off of these and make them into straight boards. Right. So, real steel brand. Real it's, steel. I have to look that guy up. He's in Pennsylvania. 
And uh, whenever you call, <laughs> and ever since I bought this edger, when I call to get new blades, I talk to the guy that built it. You, you yep. sell that, you, you fill that rack up with slab, and you just put straps around it, and you get 10 bucks for that. And people are making firewood out of it. Mm -hmm. I, I think it'll make somewhere just short of a rick of firewood. We got $6 in the strapping that's around it, so. <laughs> Selling it for $10 because uh, you just need it going, right? Mainly. Right. I mean, you you want to know what the big boys have to do? Mm -hmm. They, but see, something about this wood and run a saw through it makes it manufacturing waste. You can't burn it then. And a lot of the uh, big sawmills around, there was always fire there. It's burning slabs and burning their sawdust or burning uh, all their offcuts or whatever. And uh, most of them have had to go to a chipper. So they can grind it up and then sell chips for $400 semi-load. Make very good sense to me. It's a lot of bark, but a lot of people use that for firewood anyway. It works really good for it firewood. Burns. It starts easy and it burns hot. Well, that chain wouldn't reach all the way around, but it's sticking out both sides. So I'll be able to hook another chain to it and lift that out with the skid loader. All right, well, I think this is a pretty cool setup. I appreciate you guys taking time to watch the video. I'll put links on the screen to more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.